When people ask me, why are you so skeptical of what the medical establishment tells us? I say, because I've seen them react to a virus before. By 1987, CDC officials pretty much knew how HIV was spreading and who was in danger. Now, of course, there's no moral dimension to this, despite what Pat Robertson used to say. Gay sex is just as loving, natural, and salutary as the other kind, but science can be arbitrary. And instead of being precise and focusing on who should be protected, we launched a fear campaign about how AIDS was going to explode into the heterosexual community. Oprah Winfrey summed up what people were hearing when she said, research studies now project one in five heterosexuals could be dead from AIDS by 1990. But that didn't happen. And the upshot of bad information was that in the late 1980s, low-risk Americans were swamping testing facilities and diverting our attention and energy away from the truly at risk. New York in 2020 learned the hard way how much better precision would have been in prioritizing protecting the nursing homes. Contrary to popular lore, COVID is not Russian roulette. Of course, any virus, anything, can kill anyone at any time. But we know who COVID kills. 75% of COVID deaths are people 65 and older. 98 to 99% are unvaccinated. 78% who've died or been hospitalized were overweight. If you're obese and unvaccinated, or 85 and still crowd surfing at music festivals, <laughs> yes, this will likely go badly for you. But at some point, but at some point, that has to stop being my responsibility. Doesn't it make more sense to focus on helping the vulnerable stay safe and let the rest of us go back to living normal lives? There's always going to be another variant. We can't go on forever in permanent hair on fire, cancel Christmas. President Biden's handling of the pandemic started off polling pretty well, but now a majority disapprove. It's time to do what a growing list of countries have done and announced we're going back to something more like normal, beginning with recognizing that what we're doing to kids is unnecessary and horrible, and I don't even like kids. <laughs> But making kids who have a COVID survivability rate of 99.98% mask up like bandits, unfortunately, the thing that's getting stolen is their education, their sanity, and their social skills. A study this week from a professor at Johns Hopkins concluded that the lockdowns we all suffered through had little impact in reducing COVID deaths. Okay, that's kind of a big one to get wrong. Last July, President Biden said, you're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Well, I already knew that was wrong then, and now we all do. The former director of the CDC, Robert Redfield, believes COVID originated in a lab. And now our intelligence agencies agree it might have. But for months on social media, it was banned to even discuss it. Look, I'm not saying the medical establishment isn't trying to figure shit out or that they're corrupt, although there is some of that. <laughs> but, <clears throat> but how about just wrong? Wrong a lot. Wrong about HIV, wrong about lockdowns, wrong about kids, wrong about how you couldn't get it if you were vaccinated. Remember washing our packages? And there's never been any research showing that outdoor transmission is likely or common, yet L.A. County says we're still supposed to mask up for big outdoor events, like we'll be at the Super Bowl. Well, <laughs> supposed to. It's all theater, watching athletes mix it up on the court and then mask on the sideline, not being able to touch a menu, but watching them touch my food. <laughs> Maskless at dinner while sitting but not standing. And by the way, if Applebee's really cared about our health, they would make us cover our mouths after the food arrives. <laughs> asking, how much wrong do you get to be while still holding the default setting for people who represent the science? Eat eggs, then don't, then do. Take aspirin, then don't, then do. The food pyramid. Really? Bread and milk every day? Okay, you do you. Fifteen years ago, they were recommending trans fats. Now they're illegal. Just like almost a hundred prescription drugs, which were once called safe and effective and then yanked off the market because they were not. We've had this problem in medicine for a long time. The same people who, in private care, always say, get a second opinion, want to allow only one in the public debate. But plainly, the medical industrial complex has not earned the right to claim monopoly status on information about this virus or medicine in general. Yes, free speech has allowed people to hear misinformation sometimes, and a lot of it was yours. <laughs>